Ooh, don't get too scared. <laughs> it's caught on in a flash. They did the mash. They did the monster mash. Hey everyone, this is 22 Tiger Dude. Hey 22 Tiger Dude, my name is Movie Man Chad and we are friends on YouTube. Hell yeah, Chad. I want to thank you so much for being here to review the 1974 film Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, it is an honor to be on your channel today and I really appreciate it. Thank you and hello to all your wonderful subscribers out there. Thank you so much to, for subscribing to 22 Tiger Dude. And it is an honor to talk about this movie that is surprisingly 40 years old. Oh my gosh, it's so freaking old. It's as old as I am. Really, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is just about these group of kids. They go on a little road trip to this house where a man with a chainsaw named Leatherface comes around, kills these young people, and that's really the best way to describe this movie. Spoiler alert! No, I mean, this is a classic film. Most people know about this film, whether they're into movies or not. We're all here about this. I mean, I'm not a big, huge horror junkie, but I, I, I knew about this film long before I actually saw it, just because it was part of the huge movie world, especially the horror world. It's a horror classic in most people's eyes, and I can completely understand why. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Chad. I'm not the biggest horror junkie either, but I have heard about this movie my whole life. I haven't watched it until I was older, but I have known about this movie for a long time, and I gotta totally agree. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's a classic. I actually really love this film. It's possibly one of the best slasher films I've ever seen. It's really disturbing. The movie isn't like all gore. The acting was really good. Like for a horror film, it's actually very well done and I thought the cast really gave all they have to really bring these characters to life. Yeah, the cast is really unique. I mean, there's a guy that has to be in a wheelchair the whole time and he's trying to wheel himself around this really terrible area they're trying to get into this house and other locations he's kind of annoying he's probably one of the most annoying characters and he does last a long time in the movie of course if uh most people you know we're, we're pretty much spoiling a lot of things if we we assume a lot of people have seen this movie and if you haven't so if we spoil a few things i think it's still enjoyable i knew a lot about it i already i remember seeing the ending watching documentaries about horror films and seeing the ending so i already knew who was surviving near the end and it still was pretty effective even though watching it again but as you said before, I mean, the movie is not that gory. I did watch my DVD. I actually own it on DVD. I bought this in 2003 uh, because I wanted to see this film, the original film, finally, before I saw the remake that came out in 2003. And so I watched it last night with the commentary, and some really interesting facts about this movie is that the filmmakers really tried, and they really wanted to get a PG rating for this film. Wow, really? They wanted to go for a PG rating on that? Yeah, I mean... Uh, as you can say, as you said, I mean, it's not that gory. Yeah, there's blood that happens, but you really never see the chainsaw uh, hit. I don't, I don't, I don't believe. Watching it again, I never saw the chainsaw really hit anybody. There's a scene at the end where the chainsaw hits uh, Leatherface in the leg, but the chainsaw never really hits anybody. It's always, it feels like it's almost trying to be what Psycho did in the shower, where you never really see much. I'm not familiar with the actor's name, but the actor who played Leatherface, I thought he did a really good job. He was very intimidating, very disturbing. If I got anywhere close near to him in reality, then yeah, I would have been traumatized for life. He is not a man to be messed with. And even when you don't see what really goes on, it still kind of kind of traumatizes you, especially when you hear the chainsaw sound effect or the screaming of a young girl or a man. It's really quite terrifying, actually. I think that's why it's considered a masterpiece, because uh, it leaves more to the imagination. There are scenes where Leatherface just comes in, grabs somebody, and then slams the door, and you're just left to like, oh my gosh, what just happened? And I, I, that's why I really uh, appreciate this film and understand why it's a classic. And to my surprise, uh, and it's amazing that this film actually went somewhere. I mean, it's a very low-budget movie, and it probably had a really small crew. Just imagine, you getting your friends together, you do have an idea. I mean, this is based on a true story, true story or based on true ideas. But just imagine, you get your friends together, you have an idea, you go out in the backwoods, and you shoot a movie, and then that movie blows up and becomes one of the greatest films ever made. I mean, the movie was shot, I believe, on 16mm. 
and most movies at that time were shot probably 35 or even higher. And that movie probably made more money than some of the bigger films that came out in 1974. I could totally agree with that, but what really impresses me when I watch movies like this is how back then we didn't have, well, back then, you know, the 1970s, they didn't have all this technology or any of that stuff. They actually had to attempt all of these things and practical form just to really capture what they wanted to capture on the big screen. Yeah, I mean, uh, watching the movie, uh, they were explaining some things in the commentary that they use, really used a real chainsaw. There's no CGI around the chainsaw, and I don't know if they did that in the remakes that ca came out and all the other uh, crazy movie, uh, crazy other remakes that came out after that. But they really used a real chainsaw, and even Gunnar Hansen, who played Leatherface, explains in the commentary that while he was wheeling it around, he said, okay, don't nobody move, because if you don't move, I won't hit you or nick you. You know, it's just like they had a real chainsaw working on there and he was really trying to be as safe as possible, but if someone moved it a wrong way, he might have hurt them or even maybe caused the end of their life. I mean, that was that was that was the most craziest aspect uh, to find out about. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. For this movie, I thought for what they had to do to capture Leatherface and all these events. I love how they build up to the moments. I'm glad it's not one of those horror movies that rushes out of the way. It takes their time. You could say like for the first like 20 to 25 minutes you see you just see all of these people in the van. They're talking. Even when it's building up to the moment they go in the house, even some pretty disturbing stuff goes on while it's in that van. And especially that opening scene, I gotta mention the opening scene because that first shot with those images, the sound effects, the, that's, so, that's when you already know it sets the tone for the movie. It's probably one of the most creepiest opening scenes I've ever seen in my life. Just shot from one, I was already sucked into this movie. Yeah, those, those are some very effective uh, scenes. And I do like the fact that we really don't see Leatherface until almost 35 minutes into the movie. And the movie is only 84 minutes. Uh, but my favorite sequence in the whole entire film is the final 20 minutes of the movie when we get to see the final survivor. Uh, the lady that played the final survivor, I can't remember what her name is, but she sadly passed away at the age of 65. Uh, but, you know, her performance is just incredible. And she's trying to get out of there. And we meet all the family members. They're all having dinner. We see the, the hundred and blah 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 year old man and they're you know feeding him blood through her finger and it's just so disgusting it just lingers around and it's so terrifying but it's not gory or or gruesome and then those last few minutes when she's chasing out and trying to get out of there and and Leatherface is chasing her and there's this, this wonderful images as the sun is rising and you just get to see all this stuff going on at the final the final moments of the movie that it's my favorite I, I almost broke down in tears because it's just so memorable and so intense and so exciting uh, that I almost forget that I'm watching a horror film. I, I, I don't know, I'm just seeing something even more special than a horror film. Yeah, she did a really captivating job. It might even be one of the best performances I've actually ever seen in the horror film. The final 20 minutes, it's very intimidating, it's gruesome, it's disturbing, but without all of that blood and stuff going on, they just had creepy imagery and creepy sound effects. And oh my gosh, um, as it gets near the end, you could see her eyes, how scared out of her mind she was when she's seen all these things you could see in her eyes how bad she just wants to run out of there i'm pretty sure i would feel the same way if i was in her shoes so how the actress really acted this character and the lay uh, the amount of layers that she's given this character was really impressive and like most classic horror films the sequels are not considered as great as the other films and I've actually never seen there actually is four uh, Chainsaw Massacre movies actually the fourth one starred Matthew McConaughey and Ren uh, Renee Zellweger I've never seen it uh, I've never seen any of those but I did see the 2003 remake which I'm holding in my hand right now and I have to say this is one of the better remakes to come out I actually really enjoyed this movie and I watched the original first and then when this movie got released in the theaters actually really enjoyed this film and I think this is a solid remake uh, and compared to all the other Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies that have come out after this remake this is probably uh, this is the best one because those other things are just terrible but you know it's a good film 
uh, to a classic film, and oh, here's on the back. But I just, uh, I'm really glad to talk about this movie a little bit with you, and just, it's, it's a classic, it's a masterpiece in my eyes. I'd give it my highest rating, uh, but I really don't feel like rating it. It's just, it's, it's a great horror film because it's, it's so simple. And, and, and what it does with, with what it has is, is, is the miracle in itself, that it is so simple in its structure, and it is so terrifying. And some movie, movies try so hard to be, even this movie pretty much tried really hard, uh, the, the remake, but some movies today, horror movies, try so hard, and they're just not scary. And this movie, you know, had little to work with, and it is terrifying. And for that, you know, I think... The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is 40 years old, 1974, is definitely worthy of being one of the greatest. It, you know, people call it one of the greatest. It is one of the greatest horror films to have ever made, and I don't think anything is going to top it anytime soon. Maybe. We'll have to see. Well said, Chad. Well, I could definitely agree. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the greatest horror movies, one of the greatest slasher movies ever made. It's disturbing with little to no gore in it. The acting is actually very well done. The characters are very well good. Yeah, I could agree with what Chad said. The the character in the wheelchair can be a little bit annoying with his screaming. And maybe that's a little nitpick I could say about the movie, but even I cared for that character. The cinematography is beautiful. It's very terrifying. It's very well directed, very well written. And for this being a movie based off of an idea, I thought they really succeeded at doing that. So Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 1974. I'm going to give you my highest rating, four out of four stars. Really love this movie. And this is coming from someone that's not a big horror fan but this movie just wow and it's simple but it's just very terrifying yeah uh, it's definitely a reminder of what horror films need to be today fill in a lot of actors that are not recognizable but at least can act and give off really strange and weird performances and I think that's what's so great about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is that the performances are amazing from people that you just don't recognize so you believe what you're seeing is really happening in front of you and I think that's the most terrifying part about it at all you forget you're watching a movie 22 Tiger Dude, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this wonderful review I wish your subscribers a happy and safe Halloween give out lots of candy be safe, drive safe, don't drink and drive please if you enjoyed seeing me and my crazy looking face my hairy face, my happy Halloween face. Please subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. I do movie reviews, Blu-ray updates, movie vlogs. And I just love movies. Most of the stuff I talk about are just about movies. That's because that's all that really works in my brain. I will leave a link to Movie Man Chat's channel in the description below. This is 22 Tiger Dude. And this is Movie Man Chat. And don't forget that the both of us will always have... Good power! power. <laughs> Some people watch it, but what do we do, Tiger Dude? We live it. We live film, everyone.